that iron is a top blade stake, right? This is technically a blade stake, comes from the shoulder blade, until we cut the middle out where this little sinew runs through, then it becomes the flat iron. All right, so the blade stake, which will become the flat iron, comes out of the shoulder blade, blade stake. As you can see, this side of the meat over here has got this shiny sinew. That's actually connected right to the bone. So when you're cutting this out of the shoulder, this piece peels right off of the bone, and that bone is super, super clean. That's why this one is real, real shiny. On the other side, we've got the sinew, and we're going to take all of the sinew off and this sinew over here before we even get into the inner sinew, which then will lead to the flat iron stick. Like I said, we take the sinew off the top, sinew off the bottom. You can see the seam, right? That's the, we're hunting for that seam right there, okay? So we're gonna have a muscle on the top of it and a muscle on the bottom of it. Flat iron stick and top blade stick is technically what they're saying, but we're just gonna call it flat iron today. Um, what's so cool about flat iron? Um, it is the second most tender cut of meat on the entire animal following the tenderloin. Why is that cool? Because everybody likes tender, right? That's what they want really in a steak at home is how tender is the steak, how flavorful is the steak. This has an intense marbling. It's super beautifully marbled. Look at that, right? That's flavor country, baby. Um, also, uh, my selling point to some people that come to shop for flat iron is that if you have people in your family that eat steak well done, it happens. My sister, my nephew, right? So. This is a perfect steak for that because you can cook this steak mid well and well done and it's going to continue to be tender, right? So generally when you overcook a steak or you cook, say, a New York strip well done, it's going to be chewy and not as good. But this is the one for those well done eaters, okay? So let's get into it. We're just going to try and find the seam. For me, I go right down and I give myself a little finger hold like that, okay? This little strip right there, boom, I'm gonna pop that on the grill and just snack on it as I cook at home. But as you can see, there's that sinew, there's that sinew right there. You can see it hanging. So if you've ever taken skin off of a fish or filleted a salmon or anything like that, I kind of have the same sort of idea. So I'm gonna get my blade in there and I'm just gonna kind of wiggle and my blade's just gonna follow and you can open it up and look at your work as you go right as close as you can get to that sinew without going through it pretty tough to go through it to be honest but you're just gonna go down continue to open up making sure you're on the right path and again I'm just kind of wiggling my blade down like that as you can see that's all that tough super sinew right there that's what we're trying to get rid of you see all this intense marbling under here luscious gonna melt in your mouth See, it's almost just like a salmon. I used to do that a lot when I was cutting fish back in the day. Boom, 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 boom. And you're gonna come to the end. Bang, all right? Now, you can see all that sinew right there, right? So we're gonna flip this guy over, do the exact same thing that we just did on the other side. I'm just gonna run down that sinew right there. Boom, bang. If there's anything left on the other side, that's the main piece right there. Anything left on the other side, I'll grab my smaller boning knife. So I'm gonna go in and kind of take these little bits out by hand. Okay. And again, I'm doing really long, nice, smooth strips, just like I would a tenderloin. So you don't see the lines after you cut it. You wanna to try to keep it nice and smooth. Boom, boom, boom. Big one right there. Okay. Not bad. Pretty good. See how much not meat is on there? That's what you're looking for, okay? As close as you can get to that sinew and not taking a lot of meat off with it, you're gonna give yourself your, your own professional little yield test at home. As you do this, you're gonna get better and better and better at it. What's cool is that it's also a pretty affordable cut. So if you are trying to learn how to butcher at home, this is one that you can do. That's pat myself on the back. That's pretty good. Boom, look at that. Top blade and flat iron right there. Done.